let you in on an open secret. Scientists, we Google all the time. Google is seriously our greatest resource. And I half joke that half of grad school is learning how to Google effectively. A lot of people ask me, how can I remember so much stuff? But it's not like I have everything memorized. Instead, I have those fundamentals memorized and I know those core concepts, and then I'm able to Google those facts. By having a scientific mindset and the critical thinking skills to then dig through those facts and evaluate them, as well as try to kind of make sense of the context they're in, um, all that scientific jargon surrounding them, I'm able to interpret the results and then help communicate those in a way that has less of that jargon and makes sense to other people. And so it's not like you have to memorize everything, instead focus on those fundamentals. But once you focus on the fundamentals, you still have to be able to find the facts that you want. And so here are some tips for Googling most effectively. Weeding out those things like when you search for translation and it tries to give you German to English, but instead what you're looking for is mRNA to protein. When setting up a search, you want to be as specific as possible because Google's not going to think with the scientists as the key audience. They're going to think about like the general public. And so you need to help it out. You need to play that role of the scientist and really set up your searches strategically and then critically evaluate all the results. In order to set up those searches, these are a couple of general search um, strategies and tips and tricks. Um, and then we'll get into some more of the scientific details for science searches. Basically, you can use plus or and to only get results that contain matches to multiple things. So if you were to just search mRNA translation, you would get those words, think, search, um, you would get search results that included those words, but they could be in any order. So it could be, and they could be separated, all these things. If you want a direct match, so you want to find the phrase mRNA translation, just put those in quotations. This is really, really helpful for troubleshooting coding error messages. So this post was in part motivated by the fact that I've been doing a bunch of um, like learning coding and getting Googling tons and tons and tons to try to figure out how to do things. And sometimes you get error messages. And if you were to just copy and paste that error message, you get a lot of different kind of versions of that error message because it uses a lot of common words that can be rearranged in different ways. But if you put it in quotes, then you can get direct messages to people that have had that same error code. Sometimes there are different words that are in, in some sort of phrase. And maybe you forgot the word, or maybe you know there's different words, but you want to include all of them. For example, maybe you want to include um, results that for base excision repair and nucleotide excision repair. You could search for the phrase um, asterisk, which acts as a wild card, so any word there, and then excision repair, and that'll give you base excision repair and nucleotide excision repair. The more commonly you have that wild card like somewhere in the middle of a phrase. Okay, so now let's talk about how you can search for more science-y results. So let's go back to this idea of translation. So this is not what we're looking for when we're searching for a translation. At least this is not what I'm looking for at this point in time. You get one result for the actual translation that we want, but most of these are going to be things trying to translate between languages. So one strategy that you can use is to include um, the sci a related science specific word in your search using that plus or and. So you can do translation plus mRNA. You're going to use this strategy a lot for a lot of different things. You always try want to try to include some sort of word that hints Google, hey, I'm looking for this, this scientific meaning of this. I'm looking for this particular meaning of it. And you want to be as specific as possible. So if it has multiple meanings in different fields, you want to be specific that I'm looking for like the biochemistry definition of this, or I'm looking for how it's using physics and this sort of thing. And so you can even sometimes do like plus biochemistry, something like this. Give it a, give it a little hint as to the type of results that you want. Another strategy is to filter out the results that you don't want. So what you can do for this is include a hyphen. If you do translation hyphen language, well, now it's going to exclude results that include language. And so this is kind of like a bad example because it still includes their like Google Translate tool. But you can see that the results here, now I'm getting results about translation from mRNA to protein. But I'm also getting things like the business translation and various 
various software and things like this in addition to the translation that I want. You can also kind of combine search terms. So you can do translation plus mRNA minus language. You can also do like plus multiple words, um, just include a plus before each of those words or a minus before each of those words, um, those sorts of things. So you can make these searches really complex if you want. When you're making these searches, you want to avoid slang, abbreviation, and brand names in order to get the most like scientific -y stuff. So I like to use generic names for pharmaceutical drugs whenever possible. So for example, Spinraza is the brand name for Nusinersen, which is a antisense oligonucleotide therapy. So it's this kind of, um, it's this drug for spinal muscular atrophy. And I have a post on it, and I'm not gonna go into it right now, other than to show you that if I search for Spinraza, so this brand name, I'm going to get a bunch of kind of brandy type stuff and things trying to sell you things, various things like this. And so some of these results might be helpful, but a lot of them aren't the type of thing that I'm looking for. If, for example, I search for a nurse nursing, however, well, now the results I get are going to be a little more a little more up my alley, although there's still be some of the stuff that I'm not that I'm not looking for. And so what if I know, OK, well. I can search for, oh, another thing is I can search for two things. So I can search for Spinraza or Nusinersen just by including or, or you can include this like pipe symbol between them. And that'll include results that include um, Spinraza or Nusinersen. This or, or the pipe symbol is going to be really, really helpful for a lot of different cases where a process or a molecule goes by multiple names or it has different names in different organisms. For example, ribosome profiling or ribosome footprinting or riboseq, these are all different names for the same method. And I have a post on that if you want to learn more about it too. But basically just for now, know that those are all the same thing. And so if I include or between them, well, now it's go Google is going to be able to know that they're the same thing and find me results that contain any of those word, any of those phrases. Going back to our Spinraza or Nusinersen. So we're able to look for both of these terms with the or, but we're still getting results that might not be exactly what we want. Because what I'm looking for in this case is I want to know more about the mechanism of action. And so I want to tell Google I'm looking for the mechanism of action. And so I can include the word mechanism or the word like structure if you're looking for the chemical structure. If you're trying to figure out how a specific drug works, um, this is kind of the strategy that I typically use. It can also be helpful if to look at the images tab to find sites and papers that look that might have the type of thing that you're looking for. So I really like. I literally like good visuals and infographics. I find those are really helpful. And so sometimes what I'll do is I'll go to the image tab and look and try to find posts that look like they might have the type of images that I would find helpful or the type of style of learning that I would like. While I'm at images, I also want to show you one cool thing. What you can do is if you go to tools, you can actually search by like image size, color, type, um, or time updated or usage rights. So say you want to be able to find a figure that you can actually use in your presentation. You can go and you can look for ones that have Creative Commons licenses um, that maybe would then have ways that you could use this use this image in your, in your work. And also check out Wikimedia Commons if you're looking for images that are fair to use. Um, some of them will require you to cite the source and others won't, but that can be a good source too. When it comes to drugs too, often I'll search like the news tag to see if there are any updates on approval, et cetera, for a drug, because sometimes those best articles you find about the mechanism of action are going to be out of date in terms of the current regulatory status for the drug and what it's used for. Um, you might be looking up an article which is talking about this drug that's in a pipeline and you want to know, okay, well, did it actually get approved and this sort of thing. And so if you go to the news tab, you should be able to find more up-to-date information on those type of things that you wouldn't be able to find in the older methods paper or mechanism paper that would have the most results that you did want for the other things. Other tips for getting more science-y results? So you can search within Google Scholar to get research articles. Um, if you want to get like a review article or a primer, a primer, um, basically what you can do is you can include those words, um, those search words. So you could do like spinal muscular atrophy plus pr um, primer or review. Um, and now you'll see that you're going to get these review primers and you're going to get review articles and this sort of thing. 
And it's also going to take you to scholarly articles for this. And so this would take me to, um, this would then take me to the Google Scholar where I could find these, find these articles if I didn't go to Google Scholar directly. Say that I do that search and I find this review article. Okay, well, this looks nice. And so I go and I look at this review article and it's gonna take me to this page at the National Library of Medicine um, bookshelf. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this, this looks like a cool site. And I actually use this NIH bookshelf a lot. It's really helpful. And so what if I want to search just within the bookshelf? Well, I could do that with the, within the NIH website, but I can also do it directly from Google. And so what you can do is you can actually search within a single site by including site colon URL. And so this is going to allow you to search within any site from within the Google toolbar um, search bar. And so you can see that if I search for this phrase, I'm going to be able to get all these, all the results that I get are actually within that NCBI bookshelf, NIH bookshelf. So that can be really helpful. One more kind of like random thing. If you're searching, if you search for like stock solution, if you're trying to figure out, okay, well, what type of stock solution do people normally make of this compound? Like what concentration? Um, because you don't want to be trying to make a concentration that's not very, that's never going to dissolve or that's going to be too dilute or that's not going to be very helpful. So you want to figure out, okay, well, what stock solution do people normally make? Um, I talk typically just Google, like if I want to know what stock solution of EDTA you people make, I would search EDTA stock solution and oh, it looks like most people are making like a 0.5 molar stock solution. Here you can see that they're actually showing you the recipes, um, but sometimes you don't see the recipes. Um, and so what you want to do is if you want the recipe, just include the word recipe. Um, and typically you would then want to actually include um, quotations around that 0.5 um, molar so that you get ones that are only for that 0.5 molar if that's what you're looking for. So let's talk about how you can filter the results. So the easiest way is just kind of like through Google itself. Um, and basically if you go to all filters, you can then filter like images, videos, news, all this stuff um, that'll show up here as well. And then tools, you can filter by time et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes it's gonna show you like the, the option to have like a PDF up here. Um, sometimes it's not, I'm not exactly sure when it decides what to show what, but if you want a PDF, you can actually do this thing manually. So say I want to look for a PDF file of a 0.5 molar EDTA recipe. What I can do is I can then search for that tool or that search for that phrase and then do file type PDF. And this is then going to show me only these PDF results. You can also filter the results by publication year. So you can do that over here with the, um, with the tools and do this. Or what you can do is you can do it in the search bar, include after and um, colon the year if you want results that are only after a certain year. So if I wanted results on mRNA translation that were only after 2020, you can see that all these results I'm getting were published after 2020. You can do the same or the reverse um, to go like before 1980. You now I'm gonna get older papers. And I can even get papers between 1980 and 2020 um, if I search with the colon in between those years. One more of those general ones is that you can use this little squiggly line to include synonyms. Um, but remember that Google's idea of synonyms is more things like large is the same as massive, is the same as huge. Other than ribosome profiling is the same as ribosome footprinting is the same as riboseq. So it's better to be explicit by using or in those cases. And also remember that not all the results are gonna be created equally. So think critically about whatever you find and use that scientific frame of mind. And if you want more general Google searching tips, um, I'll post links to some helpful things that have more, more tips of things that you can do um, for easy calculations and various um, searching strategies that are more more for a general audience rather than just specifically for scientific searches but some of this is really helpful um, for example you can search for words that are within a certain number of words to another um, like within a certain distance from another word or words that are in a title versus in the body of the paper um, so some really really helpful stuff um, some of these I didn't know about. I knew about a lot of them, but not all of them. And so these can be really helpful too. And I will post, I will post links to those sorts of things as well so that you can you can check them out. And I hope that helps and happy searching.